number of techniques exist for achieving the insertion of a central venous catheter into a vein, all of which require the selection of an appropriate catheter design. The over-needle method of insertion is similar to that practiced in peripheral intravenous cannulation, using a large IV catheter fitted closely over a needle. It's normally used in emergency situations. Omida's product, Secalon T, has been designed specifically for this technique and incorporates a flow switch to regulate the fluid path. Some force is needed to push the catheter through the skin, so it's usually made of a rigid material such as Teflon or polyethylene. The whole unit is passed into the vein, the needle is withdrawn and the catheter is advanced. The short length and rigidity of the catheter makes it most appropriate for cannulation of the internal jugular vein. Through introducer catheters are inserted into the vein through an introducing needle or plastic cannula. They're usually made from silicone or polyurethane. Worldwide, this is the most commonly used technique for venous catheterization. However, a large puncture site is required for insertion, which means greater risks of infection. Also, the introducer sometimes remains at the insertion site until the catheter is removed, which causes patient discomfort. Consequently, this method is being replaced by the Seldinger technique, particularly in the intensive care environment. To illustrate the use of the Seldinger technique, we'll now observe an insertion in a clinical situation. Before the procedure begins, the patient is anaesthetized and iodine applied to the chosen area, here, the right internal jugular vein. Heparin saline solution is used to flush through each lumen of the catheter prior to insertion. The introducer is advanced into the correct position in the vein. The flow switch is turned off so air doesn't enter the catheter. The syringe is reattached for aspiration. The flow switch turned on and venous blood aspirated. When it's confirmed that the catheter is in the internal jugular vein, the Seldinger guide wire is advanced through the vein and into the superior vena cava. A small nick is sometimes made in the skin to facilitate the passage of the dilator. The dilator is threaded over the Seldinger guide wire into the vessel with a rotating motion. A slight pressure is applied to the vessel as the dilator is withdrawn. The catheter is threaded over the Seldinger guide wire. Until the wire protrudes through the brown hub, which is the lumen connected to the distal tip. The catheter is then introduced into the vein. It is about 20 centimeters long and in this case is advanced to about 15 centimeters. The 
wire is carefully withdrawn. And aspiration of venous blood is confirmed in the syringe. The final flow switch is connected. The lumen is aspirated to reconfirm the presence of venous blood and to ensure that air is removed from the flow switch. The flow switch is turned off to close the system. Once the position of the catheter tip has been confirmed by X-ray, the catheter is firmly secured into place by suturing it to the skin. The position of the catheter is checked to ensure that the patient will be comfortable. Extra sutures can be placed to provide additional security and comfort. Finally, the line is flushed by removing the cap, applying the syringe, aspirating to confirm venous access, and flushing through with heparin saline. The catheter is now in place to allow monitoring and infusion therapy. The Seldinger technique uses a small puncture hole, allowing large bore catheters to be inserted using small bore introducer needles, minimizing blood loss. This also makes it the most appropriate method for multi-lumen catheter use. Both clinicians and nurses are more aware of the benefits associated with multi-lumen catheters. The first of these is that only one insertion is required for several procedures. This minimizes trauma to the patient. It allows the simultaneous infusion of non-compatible drugs at different rates. It also allows simultaneous CVP and infusion of drugs, or repetitive blood sampling. Multilumins are also useful when the choice of catheter sites is limited, for example with patients who have extensive burns. Central venous catheterization is a routine but critical procedure, and it's important to be aware of various complications associated with its use.